Okay, this is per user request or uh, viewer request talking about some of the congressional races that are going on this year <clears throat> if there are swing districts and this person well I'll put, I'll put him in the comments because I don't remember his name at the moment but um, he was asking about Colorado and Nevada I believe and I'll you know I have to admit I am not exactly the expert on every congressional district or specific states besides my own and the number of other ones that I've studied for a while. So not Colorado, but there are a couple here that I think could be competitive. And uh, the first, so let's look at one of the ones that um, is definitely, let me see, is this the one? Not the six. So the third congressional district held by Scott Tipton is a Republican district. Now, I think I think a lot of people are going to be calling this a swing district this year, mostly because of the climate in the country. You know, people are predicting a blue wave. If you look at the record here, now, first of all, she the, the Democratic candidate, Diane Mitch Bush, she does have like a fairly large amount of money that's been donated to her, but she's just being outspent by Scott Tipton, who is the GOP incumbent. And if you look at some of these past races, okay, so we we don't have a choice but to, to examine some of these past races. I know that we can't rely on them too much, but he has done very well. Now, in the 2016 election, which was, of course, one where you see more in, in a presidential election year, you do see more voters in general, which is just a fact. The more people feel that they have on the line for presidential election, for a, an election to come out and vote, the more people will turn out. That's why, of course, if you have a school board or, or, or issue election in your local uh, community, there just aren't that, that many people that go out to vote within your community. Because some people, for example, don't even, uh, they don't even have kids at school. Okay, so why would they care about the school board election? So I would say that in 2016, Tipton, whose district is not, is not super, super Republican, he still won by a comfortable 14-point margin. An election before that by a 23-point margin. So Tipton's <laughs> district, which is only according to the Cook Political Report, it's only six points slanted to the Republican. He's actually outperforming it. Now, it is a pretty huge district that takes up most of the western uh, the western areas of Colorado. And, of course, you go to the other side, uh, Ken Buck, on the eastern edge of Colorado. This is more like cattle country. So you have kind of Rocky Mountain Territory, this area, I, I could, I mean, if you guys think I, I'm not really getting Colorado right, you can write in and say, hey, you know what the hell you're talking about. But the fact is that if you go to, to most states, the rural areas of the state are going to vote GOP. Uh, it's it's not very common for a Democrat to do well there. And um, I, I do expect Tipton to hold his seat. I expect these other guys, Lambert and, and Ken Buck, to hold their seats. <clears throat> By the same token, I think, uh, you know, Jared Paulus, who's not running for re-election, he's running for governor, his seat, I took a look at that, we're not going to talk much about it, which is in northern Colorado, it does not look like it's going to flip to the Republicans, and it goes without saying that the first district, I took a look at those numbers, and, and the, the, the simple fact is that the GOP is not investing in trying to flip those seats, <coughs> And prob probably correctly, they're not. They're not. They're not going for for districts that simply are not going to be easy to motivate for them. I think the gets the district is is more in the Denver metro area, if I'm not mistaken. Then you have these two, the sixth district, 
which is over here, that is a swing district. And you're going to have an Army Ranger, Jason Crow, challenging the incumbent Republican, Mike Kaufman, in this race. And th this was this was a district, you know, according to this information. And, and you know, there's there's many ways to gather information. I, I think Ballotpedia is a great place to go. If you guys don't agree with me, just go go read there. There's there's a lot of other information that I might I might have missed. <coughs> But you see, there was a there was a primary where Crow did earn a substantial amount of votes, not much less than Kaufman. There were more participants in the Democratic primary because there were two candidates, of course. The candidate that ran against Crow is the same guy who had that hilarious um, YouTube video uh, with the pepper spray. Let's see if we can find it. So you have. Levi Tillman. It's a weird thumbnail from Alicia Clegg. Sorry, Alicia, I have to call you out on that. Um, let me see here. Pepper. So, so here we go. In just a few years, he'll be in school, and Donald Trump wants to give his teacher Cut class the in case of emergency cabinet. But it's powerful and won't accidentally yeah. kill a kid. Trust me, this will stop anyone in their tracks. That is a lot of pepper spray, man. <laughs> it's incredibly painful. And now I just can't see anything. Wow. That's it. So, so that was the primary opponent. He, he did lose. I mean, I wonder why. <laughs> I mean, we could have had this in Congress. Um, so, so yeah, he lost. This Jason Crow guy is going to be, he is the nominee for the Democrats. A, a little note, though. A little note. The, the problem with Jason Crow, and I don't know if you can really blame him for this, is that the DNC in that leaked... Um, that leaked video. Uh, leaked audio. Uh, so, Tillman was trying to uh, confront one of their people who was trying to get him to drop out of the race. In his farewell address, President Obama told Americans Steny that Hoyer. if they were fed up, they should go out and run for office. If you're disappointed by your elected officials, grab a clipboard, get some signatures, and run for office yourself. And in the Trump era, thousands of Democrats have heeded his call, running for office in elections across the country. Meanwhile, in the race for Congress, the DCCC, or the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, has moved aggressively to crush competitive primaries. DCCC officials and senior Democrats are hand-picking moderate, business-friendly candidates and are attempting to push progressives out of key races. In Colorado's 6th District, one of the most competitive seats in the country, the DCCC moved in early to select Jason Crow, a corporate lawyer, as the party candidate, pushing resources, endorsements, and money to Crow while elbowing out progressive Democratic competitors. The Democratic Party often denies that they play favorites. What follows is a meeting between Congressman Steny Hoyer, the number two Democrat in the House, and Levi Tilleman, a progressive running for the nomination for the Colorado seat. Levi, I want to, obviously I want to talk to you about this congressional race. Absolutely, that's what I expected. Yeah. Yeah. You would like me to get out of the race. Well, you keep saying I would like you to get out. And of course that's, that's correct. Yeah. I know you're fundraising for Crow. Yeah, you know. I'm for Crow. I'm for Crow because a judgment was made very early on. I didn't participate in the decision. So your position is a decision was made, you know, very early on before voters had a say. That's fine because that's the DCCC knows better than the voters of the sixth congressional district, and we should line up behind that candidate. That's certainly the consequence of our decision. There are two things I'd like you to consider. 
one may be easier than the other. The first would be uh, if you stay in the race. Mm -hmm. Frankly, I would hope you would not. I'll get to that. But if you stay in the race, it is not useful to the objective to tear down the mm -hmm. pro. Pro's clearly the favorite. That doesn't mean you win. It just means he's the favorite. I hear you. That doesn't mean it's right. It just means no. no, I hear you. Right. I don't know Pro well, but I think he's a decent human being. So before we before we go any further on that, Pro is the favorite, N in no small part, Congressman Hoyer, because the DCCC not only put its finger on the scale, but started jumping on the scale very early on. And I'm born and raised a Democrat. I mean, it's undemocratic to have a small elite select someone and then try to rig the primary against the other people running. And that is that is basically what's been happening. I hear you, and I disagree. But you were part of that process Absolutely. as well. You said Absolutely. after? Yes. Yeah. I've been at this a long time. Yeah. Uh, when I said you need to get in strong, hard, and early, you just do it. You know, obviously, that's your choice. And you guys are shoveling money at him. I'm going to continue. You're going to continue to do it? We are going to continue to do it. And the reason why we're going to do it is because a decision was made to focus. It was clear that was our policy and our hope that we could, early on, try to come to agreement on a candidate that we thought could win the judgment. All right, so, so you see that. Uh, I hope the audio was okay. I don't always have the greatest audio. But that that was broadly the conversation between Tillman and Hoyer. And now this, uh, what, what Kaufman would have to do in order to win this race which I think he, he's going to have, you know, he's not going to, it's not going to be an easy one to do. You do see that there's a fairly large amount of money being invested in it by the Democrats. He's outspent. Yeah, he has outspent um, Kaufman, even though they're fairly even in terms of uh, their, their, uh, the amount of money they've raised. And I, I would say that, the best approach to warding off this challenge on Kaufman's part would be to say, well, look, I won this district last time, even though it was not necessarily a very pro-Trump district. I get it that a lot of people object to Trump in this district. However, uh, the guy who, who's being elected in my stead was basically picked by a political elite group within his party. Now, that's not a good, I mean, that, of course, that's kind of going and saying, well, I'm not going to talk about my record. I'm going to talk about what's so negative about my challenger. Other than that, I'm not sure exactly what would be the other distinguishing factor between Kaufman and Crow. Um, I don't know that, that, I mean, there's, there are a few people that are saying, that Crow is the odds-on uh, favorite to win. And um, these polls, by the way, you have and, and Citizens United, so that, that's a partisan poll. You know, even though I personally am not a Democrat, I would probably support ending Citizens United. But that's a partisan poll. And then there's, and by the way, this guy this guy is receiving super PAC money, uh, Crow. So it's, it's not as if they're, they're putting, they're, they're putting their principles at the head of the, priority list. <laughs> he is receiving super PAC money. He is not exactly, you know, Mr. Grassroots Democrat. He is a corporate Democrat. So if you're voting in that district for the Democrat, you're literally voting for a party line Democrat. You're not voting for somebody who's going to be sort of an independent voice for your district. And if that's what you want, I mean, I guess that's your right. Uh, if you're voting for Kaufman, I would probably say that he's, uh, you know, he has a record. If you look at their records, they're both veterans. You, you can't really go and uh, disparage both of them because of that. Uh, it says, you know, Crow is attacking 
Kaufman because because he's connected to the NRA and and very connected apparently. I would say that I would say this, okay? If Democrats believe that they are going to win a lot of seats, if you're a Democrat, if you think you're going to get a lot of seats by winning by running against the NRA, I don't think you're really talking to voters anywhere. The the majority of Americans do not, you know, I, I get it. The school shootings are are you know people get traumatized from them, or they they think that something has to change. The fact of the matter is that nobody has been able to pierce the NRA's uh, ability to mobilize voters. And ultimately, when you run against the NRA, you typically lose. Hillary Clinton said that the group she was most proud of opposing in her career was the NRA. And she lost, she lost that election in 2016. And, and a lot of these other people who, who are running campaigns we have we have in ohio okay to step step away from colorado for a second in ohio we have uh the candidate for governor his name is um richard cordray he used to take money from from the nra a democratic candidate now he's pretending he says he's painting his opponent dewine as this nra puppet well you used to take money from the nra too buddy Okay, so people people have a have have a problem with NRA when they start running for office. They have a problem with NRA because it uh, apparently it makes for good uh, election ads. What it doesn't do, I believe, is is win elections. And I'm not trying to say that as a par partisan person. I don't belong to the NRA. I, I think sometimes NRA is. I think sometimes it's kind of a ripoff. But if you're a member of that organization, I, I think you would have to agree with me that it does win elections and it does have a consistent record of mobilizing voters. So I don't know why they continue to focus on them so obsessively. They know that in many of these districts, once you, once you mention the NRA, people decide in a negative light, people decide, well, we're going to turn out and vote against you. So I don't think that Jason Crow is doing himself the best, service in attacking them but you know i could be wrong and yes this is a swing district that did vote for hillary clinton so he could win <coughs> let's be honest another another uh district i think could be a, a swing district but it's not it's it's not as much of a swing district as the last one the sixth is the colorado seventh district that would be in again i think it's in the denver metro area over in the center central part of the state so yeah lakewood colorado i believe is close to denver i've never been to colorado by the way so if you're from there i think you're you know based on what i know i think your state's beautiful uh it's not new jersey which is already a plus so <laughs> let's go to this this race um you see, you have this, uh, Ed Perlmutter did earn a substantial, and this was in a primary where he was unopposed. He earned a substantial amount of votes, and his opponent, all, he, he earned a little more than half. So that's not encouraging if you're the, uh, the challenger, okay? And, of course, Perlmutter also has this massive fundraising advantage, now the only reason, and this is this is a reach, and I'll admit it's a reach, and I'm not going to predict that this will fall to the, to the Republicans, but the issue that I see could happen is that the blue wave is not as big of a of a of a thing as people think, and the fact is that in 2016, Perlmutter had turned out for him almost 200,000 voters. In 2014, which was a midterm, he had more than 50,000 less voters than before. Now, the Republicans would have to, in order to win this seat, generate a large amount of enthusiasm and, and recruit across party lines. And, you know, the, the, the real question is, you know, the, the challenger here is this Mark Barrington guy. He Now, there's not much information on these people. I don't think that this is really a watched district. But there would have to be some sort of um, discussion about, you know, somebody who would be able to to bring something back as a congressperson for Colorado. 
so there's Mark Barrington guy. Let's take a look at his website, I guess. So let's let's see how he's running. That that might be a good indicator. Um, here we go. So it looks like like a little more of a, a younger voter, younger candidate. I mean, um, and he's basically running as a, as a local person, small business background. Uh, you know, a lot of stuff about. I think I think this candidate doesn't necessarily have a very specific campaign, and the only way to win that way, to win when when you don't have specifics, is basically to go and say, uh, "Look, I can bring my money back to Colorado in terms of of you know maybe funding and and crap like that." If you're saying, "Well, I know I'll be able to cooperate with the president better than my Democratic opponent," uh, now let's see on the issues here. Fiscal responsibility. I'm running because I envision the world looking quite different 12 years from now because we chose to stand together right now for this moment to fight for the people of Jefferson and Adams County. We envision 10 years from now that the adoption rates have surpassed. the. So, you know, this is somebody in favor of childhood adoption. You know, a lot of this stuff. So I don't see this personally as a district that will flip. But it, if there is a district that is held by a Democrat that could flip in Colorado, that, that would be the one. OK, the other two, the first and the second, which are, are in northern Colorado, I don't see them flipping to the to the Democrat. OK, and as for the sixth, there is a high or sorry, I don't see them flipping to the Republicans from their Democratic incumbents. The, the, there is a high chance that the sixth does flip for the Democrats. So if you're a Republican and you, you really want to promote, I guess, the president's agenda or what have you, you live in Aurora or you live in that area of Colorado, you, you have to go out and vote or else you will get somebody who is probably going to be uh, a DNC uh, plant. That's basic. That's the only way to say it. OK, so please let me know what you think if you're from Colorado Am I wrong? Do you think your district would also be able to flip? Do you think that the, do you think that there will be a blue wave first of all because the sentiment I'm getting nationally from everywhere that I see is that people people are not as fired up about the election as politicians would like it to be on either side. But I could be wrong. Uh, that's about it. Please like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. And also subscribe to my second channel, Razor Ray Live Wounds, and have a great next week. It is Sunday already, so see you guys later.